All right, we are back for another episode of View from the Raptors behind the scenes with the Boston Celtics, myself and Abby Chin. And uh, Abby, today's episode is all about fatherhood and being an NBA player. And fortunately, we've got our man Rob Williams here yes, to Lord. talk to us about it. He's got two young kids. Congrats on that, Rob. Appreciate um, it, bro. What, what does it mean to you to be a dad? Very open question here to start. <laughs> yeah, uh, really open. But, um... <laughs> Just leading by example, you know, um, my my actions, you know, my legacy, like I don't want my kids to, uh, people to come up and say bad things about me to my kids, you know. Uh, just giving them the, the best example that I can, that I know of, and, uh, you know, you got to be, you got to be delicate with kids, man. You got to be, you got to be soft with them, you know, so. It was a big change for me. My first child being my daughter too. It was a it was a big turnaround for me. But um yeah, just the legacy, man. Uh holding your name to a high standard, you know, so when you're gone, like I said, people can come up to your kids and have nothing but good things to say. How it's, different is your childhood? Was your childhood than the one your kids are growing yeah, up? Yeah, they in? spoiled, man. <laughs> yeah. I was spoiled, don't get me wrong, you know, uh what parent doesn't want to spoil their kids? You know, but, um, you know, I did go through a part where part of the time we had it hard for a little bit. And um, thankfully, I'm in a position my kids don't get to see that, thankfully. But like I said, man, it's different. You know, it's a different day and age. And I was telling my uh, my girlfriend the other day, I kind of don't want to, you know, all the new game systems and new stuff that comes out. I kind of don't want to shower them with that just because... Christmas might mean less to them, or birthdays might mean less to them, you know, being able to get all of this stuff at a young gauge, but it's kind of inevitable, man, when you, yeah. you know, when it's, when it's like that, it's kind of inevitable, but... Um, it does make the holidays tougher. It, it makes it so much tougher, man, it's so much coming tougher. Coming up with a Christmas list after your kids already have everything, everything you could possibly like, want. come on. Abby, you got that experience too, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rob, you said everything changed yeah when when ava was born yeah i can only imagine because i i have not gotten there but i can only imagine like in that moment what's going through your head and in that moment for you you had just started your professional career right you were yeah. two months in at that point i think it was early december obviously um season started in mid to late october at that time yeah so what did change first and foremost and then secondly just how did you figure it out when you've got all of these things going on at once where your life is changing not only from a professional standpoint mm -hmm. but also changing from like i mean you got to change diapers you got to put yeah. the baby so like so all these different things it's so involved yeah it was um i can't say it happened as soon as she was born you know what i'm saying but maybe like a year after my, I started noticing the disrespect that women get in the, in the world a lot more, you know? And, really? Um, just me putting myself back in my, you know, younger teenage yeah. days and I got a daughter now, so I'm thinking like she going she got to be a teenager, you know, she got to grow up and I know the way that I've seen, you know, girls being treated and that, they kind of softened me up, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want my, my daughter to have to go through any of this stuff, you know. Like I said, it didn't happen right away. It was like, you know, like gradually as I learned, like, all right, I do have a baby girl. She's not going to be, she's four already, you know, time flies. So it just kind of made me put an emphasis on, you know, um, but there's a lot of, a lot of women getting mistreated terribly in this world. So. It's so true. And it's yeah. really cool to hear you mention that. Uh, my daughter is seven yeah. and it, it is a, a mind shift just in the words that you use, even when you're talking to her mm -hmm. about empowerment and, and body image. And there are so many layers to that. Yes. But it's also something that I feel like I was concerned about while I was pregnant and before I had her. But it has come naturally yeah. to me. And, and now once you're in it every day, it's just something it's just how you are and, and how you want to, like you said, lead by example yeah. for them. Yeah, right? for sure. For sure. I, uh even even like the way I talk, like the way I can talk to, the way I might talk to my son, like 
like with best friends, like he understand me, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, get off the floor. <laughs> hey, come in the room and do this, you know, like he understand me. With my daughter, I didn't I didn't try to tiptoe, but like with my son, it was it's straight hard hard love, you know what I'm saying? It's my <laughs> little boy, like I you know, but with my daughter I kinda tried to like embrace yeah. it softly, yeah. you know, like I wanna, you know, let you know that I'm here for you, you know. Um you're gonna go through a lot in the world, like you said, but I want her to get the love from home first. Thankfully her mother does a great job. Shout out to her mother. Mother does a great job of um, you know, just empowering her, yeah. letting her know letting her know stuff. And um instilling confidence. Yeah, I think yeah. You yeah. know, just teaching her, uh honestly, just about the world period as much as we can at this at this young age. So Got to keep that going. Sounds like for you, it's kind of been instinctual, yeah. right? Like your mind is telling you to raise your son one way yeah. and your mind is telling you to raise your daughter maybe a little bit differently. Yeah. Sounds kind of like a coach in a, in a way that yeah. like coaches have to, you have to coach different people different ways. Yeah. Yes. Um, but how did you settle into like knowing how to navigate the two different routes? Yeah. So uh, my daughter... My daughter, me and my daughter's mother uh, were never together. So my daughter didn't live with me. So I felt like whenever I seen her, I was always showing her the most love. Like everything was so sensitive, you know what I'm saying? In tune, like I'm in t trying to be soft as I can with her, just show her all the love that I have for, mm -hmm. for the moment that I had her. That's a challenge it, in itself though too, isn't it? it? Going from zero to 100 and yeah, then it's all on you when yeah, she's there. It's so challenging. And she teaches me, like I said, yeah. she teaches me stuff like um, it'll be a while where I haven't seen her. She come back and she, I try to help her do something and she, you know, push me away. She can do it on her own. So it's <laughs> just crazy. I don't need your help. Yeah. Dad. But like with my son, it was, I see him every day. He getting on my nerve. Like it's, <laughs> it's, tough, it's tough love, you know, like I know. When I go to sleep, I'm going to wake up and see him, you know, yeah. like, that's just how it is. So I feel like I had to, that's the reason for me taking that different approach because I wasn't around it a lot. So, mm -hmm. How nice is it having, and what has it been like to have some role models within the locker room? When you got here, Al, I think, maybe yeah. had three kids at that point. He's got five now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that kind of example. Jason as well. Yeah. It, um, it showed you how to... Um, juggle the league life and uh your family you know so um i watch al like he come in early uh he get his work in you see him rushing out and people thinking he rushing just to get out the gym but really he rushing because he maybe has a routine of dropping his kids off at school mm -hmm. or picking them up you know every day at school or he have a routine of game days to come in and work this certain time he'll go home and spend time with his son, you know. So watching him and JT do that helped me learn when to insert, you know, family time, specific family time, how to juggle that with the league life. And just seeing, you know, the joy that they have for their kids. Um, you see Deuce and Al, oldest son, uh, in the locker yeah. room every night playing one-on-one. -on -one. It's uh, it's like a goal. You know, I can't wait for Hendrix to be yeah. <laughs> running through there doing that. But learned a lot from them guys what is it like having hendrix be around in the family room and, and yeah, there for you it's, um, win or lose it's uh it's it's a thing that honestly i'm ready for him to get older and like be able to look back and realize like i, I actually was in here with these guys to, like, at a young age. yeah all, you yeah. know like he he don't understand right now even like to be honest even Deuce and Al, son, like, I know they understand, you know what I'm saying? But you reach the age of, like, 14, 15, you looking at pictures of you, you yep. know, JT, JB, you yep. like, oh, my dad actually had me in there, you know? So really ready for him to just hit that stage. Now it's just all running around, eating everything. <laughs> <laughs> snacks. So many snacks. <laughs> you, you talked about learning how to juggle the league life and parenthood. That, mm -hmm. That's something that I want to concentrate on here because I don't think everyone out there really can understand until you're on that plane it's a and lifestyle. flying it, in and out and getting different. home at midnight after Still, a home game. Like, <laughs> there, There's only so many hours in a day. Facts, facts. So 
I mean, I, I have a dog and I feel like I have barely time to take the dog outside. So I can only imagine an actual human being that's depending on me. Facts, facts. How, how have you tried to carve the right amount of time out? And what is the right amount of time um, um, that you have found in your personal life? So um, obviously any off day or any day, you know, just a practice day. But um, I try to. So Which there aren't many. There are, just to be clear, are, yeah. I just want to throw that out <laughs> there. That's true. Games but, and travel. Um, on a game, like, regular day, we hear, you know, shoot around. We have shoot around, say, 10 in the morning. Um, my son will get up around 7. I'll I'll sit with him uh, when he gets up just because I know I'll have to leave him like an hour mm-hmm. for shoot around. Uh, spend that time with him. When I get back, maybe spend, like, two or three hours with him, take a uh, pregame nap. Most of the times, if he doesn't go to the game, he's down by the time I get yeah. it out or get home. Or even when he does go to the game, when we pull up in the house and I'm like, hey, Hendrix, you ready to get out the car? Turn around. He, <laughs> you know, he, he knocked out. So any, like you said, any rare off day or any time that we have, you know, I try to just take him to do something, the aquarium, you know, um, mm-hmm. little jungle gym, take our dog to the park, anything. You just got to... It's so hard to plan. It's like you don't know until the day before. Like yeah. we don't know our schedules That's until true. like yep. you know the day before. We may they say we don't have something then we got a mandatory <laughs> film and it throws off, you know, mm-hmm. the whole day. So you gotta just work around it. Do you really wake up at seven with him when you can? Yeah, yeah. I wake up That's at impressive. like seven every morning. Ooh. Even when we get back from a road trip yeah. at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I wow. Oh my gosh. I early. No, You're I'm a laying. Wild I'm, man. I'm laying in bed with the kids yelling at me like <laughs> five more minutes. Yeah, well, I, I kind of <laughs> hate me alone. I hate the fact that I'm a light sleeper because I'm always the first to hear him cry in the morning, and I try to like <laughs> block try, it out. Yeah, I try to just close my eyes a little harder. I'm like maybe Asia here, but nah. I'm I put a pillow over it. my <laughs> <laughs> Try to hide? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> From the reality that's coming. Um, I, I spoke to Al about the same topic, and yeah. we're going to hear from him later in the episode, but he talked about you and Jason, and first and foremost, that he, he didn't have his first child until he was seven years in the league. Mm-hmm. So very different scenario from you guys, and he just couldn't conceptualize how you guys were able to juggle the two things. That's one thing he said, but the other thing that really stood out to me is that he can just, when you guys are, are around your kids, he can see like the pure joy yeah. in your eyes. Yeah. How would you describe? You can how, see it now. Yeah, how, yeah, how yeah, it makes you uh, feel to, to be around your kids and, and to be a proud parent. <laughs> what, is, what is that emotion? It's actually funny because when he goes to sleep at nighttime, like I'll be on my phone and I see, a, I was just with him three hours ago before he went to sleep and I see a picture of something and I'm like, Man, I can't wait till he wakes up so I can hug him. <laughs> but um, that joy, man, is just seeing. I think it's two things for me. It's seeing myself in him and it's seeing him learn to do things on his own. I think that's the most proud he makes me as his dad. It's funny. I'm actually smiling about it hard. But You're proud, man. You can like, tell. Even when he learned how to walk, you know, um, we first tried to get him to walk. He take a couple of steps and he would fall and he would just crawl, you know, the rest of the way. Yeah. But now, like, if he falls, he, he'd get back up, you know, and he doesn't know little things like yeah. that. You know, they, I'm smiling big as, you know, big as they behind him, but it's, it's little stuff like that, man. And I think, I think he might be saying that, but I don't want to be the person to toot their own horn, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm going to wait till it's clear. Dada is easier to say than mama (laughs) for those first words. But the part that I love too, and um, I don't know if anybody reads the Us magazine or something, but the stars, they're just like us. You posted a video of yourself at a swim class Mm -hmm. with Hendrix and getting in the pool, but then uh, you were kind of down, but you stood up and the pool is like comes to your knees. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, um, the water was like four feet. Yes. And my back was hurting, like I had to hold him low to the water. <laughs> yeah. so I was like, I was just near <laughs> dog. Yeah, 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 it. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but nice to be there for those moments. And yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was his second class. Obviously, those moments are uh, are priceless. It's actually something that like you look at as a hassle. Like I've been working out all day. I don't want to go yeah. to a swimming class. But once you like there, you never want it to end. 
And you see the smiles on their face. And, like kids <laughs> yeah. love water. And yeah, he actually. They don't. They love it when they don't realize how dangerous it is. That's right. Just, oh yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. So he's just jumping in all day. He don't realize if I'm not right here, like you gone, buddy. <laughs> but it, it's worth it though. Do you ever bring him on road trips? Um, Has he been? He he came to the finals last year. He was really young. He came to the finals. It was a long flight, and he's coming to Houston. He's coming to Houston. Nice. This kind of relates. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is like the culture here with the Celtics is, yeah, it's really family first. Like mm-hmm. they they want you to be there for those key moments. They, you know, work comes second. Yeah. For you in particular, you missed games for your first child being born and for your second child being born. What, what does it mean to you to be working at a place and playing for an organization that prioritizes that stuff for you guys, that you are able to be there for those moments and you don't have to worry about how that's going to you know, reflect on your work ethic or anything like that? Yeah, even when uh, even when Brad was coaching, we, we all knew he was real big on, mm-hmm. on stuff like that, like it. It wasn't even a question with him, you know, if it was a serious family matter, you know, uh, he would make you be there. You you know, you didn't have a choice. He even missed a game at one point yeah. for a personal matter. Yeah. So it was like um, we always respected that about the, the whole organization. And, um, you know, it makes you want to give the, the organization your all, you know, to know that they like, all right, like it can be, for instance, um, I think – Malcolm uh, had like a couple of weeks, you know, uh, till his his second child was born, I think, and uh, they were already making a plan on like, oh, right, you might not be at this trip, mm-hmm. you know, you know, because they they respect it so much, and it's something that is very respectful. Like I said, it's a life being brought in, or any any family situation, a family emergency, but it just makes you want to give the the organization your all, man, knowing they, they care about you like that. Even Luke, Luke left mid game this yeah, season. We were in New York in Madison yeah, Square he Garden. Did. He walked back in the locker room. He was like, well, "I was out. He I'm was out. gonna get he was gonna get a lot of run that game." Yeah. He's like, he said he went up to Dame and he hey, was Hey, life happens, man. You right. never know Quick. when it's gonna come. Quick. He's like, well. I'm wrong, guys. Yeah, he I'm said the good. first time out, they told him, like, right after tip-off. And then first, so he's sitting there on the bench just, like, waiting for yeah. a chance to tell someone. Can't imagine. And he went to Damon, and he was like, I got to go. Yeah. Can't Cannot it. imagine. Well, no. Rob, uh, congratulations on two beautiful kids and Ava and Hendrix. And Appreciate you've it. You've been an unbelievable dad so far. I know I haven't been there to directly watch it, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Uh, so congratulations. It. We appreciate you coming on to... Talk with us about it. We're going to hear from Al Horford talking about the same thing here in a minute. Okay. Rob, thank it. you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Abby, that was an awesome conversation with Rob. I'm so happy that we got 15-ish minutes with him. And last night we were talking at the game. We didn't even know if we were going to be able to fill that amount of time with him because he's usually so short-winded. But he was so happy to discuss being a father and talking about his kids. That, that was a lot of fun. That's what I was going to say. You could just – the joy that he has in being a father is – obvious and clear and and that's where his passions are and so of course he's going to talk about that and be willing and I'm just so grateful for his willingness to open up about that and tell us a little bit more about him I learned so much more about Rob in that 15 minutes than I have in the four seasons that he's been here yeah and honestly sitting down and just looking at his eyes and he kept saying it he was like yeah I'm smiling right now like while I'm talking about it you can just I've never talked to him about his kids before and just having that opportunity to see you, the word joy just comes to mind like emitting out of his from his smile from his eyes you can just see how proud he is of his daughter and then even afterward Abby the, yeah. everyone the cameras turned off but he was like yeah my daughter's so independent like wants to she do doesn't everything let me herself. she doesn't let yeah. me help with anything she wants to do you can just see how proud he is and that's really what stood out to me I don't know if anything else came out of the conversation for you I do think we see that and inside TD Garden, when from Jason and Deuce running on the floor as soon as the game is over, and even Al Horford, I see it behind the scenes when his son, as Rob mentioned, Ian comes to join him and in going into the locker room. So you do get glimpses of that, but it was just so nice to have to be able to sit down with Rob and and allow him to open up and and give us a little bit more. And fortunately, we had the same opportunity, at least I did, to to sit down Mm -hmm. with Al and talk to him about this exact same topic. We're going to toss to him in a moment. Before we do, I just want to remind everyone out there, if you're listening, rate, subscribe, and review. If you're watching, 
Please do the same on YouTube. Uh, the audio version will be dropping every Tuesday, the video version on YouTube every Wednesday. So we're coming at you every week for 12 weeks. I think we got about six six or so more Are left we? this season. Almost so at we, hope, we hope everyone is enjoying us so far. But yeah, I got also to catch up. Also shout out to all the other dads. Yes. On the team, there are a lot. A lot of I dads. I think that that is think indicative it helps them. Yes, yeah. of this team and how much older we've it's become and mature, but there's Luke Cornett and Derek White, and I'm sure I might be missing more. But um, it's it's cool to see. And then also the assistant coaches and having their yeah. kids. Um, Tony Dobbins and his two beautiful daughters <laughs> yeah. are always sidelines pregame. And then uh, Aaron Miles, who has four sons, and he gets <laughs> them out on the court just to run whenever he gets the chance. So He's got to get all that energy out of them, right? Yes. It just speaks to, like what you said with Rob, the – priority that the Celtics place on family and you can feel that just being around the team you make a really good point though that there are so many dads on this team and this team is so mature yeah I think it's kind of like baked in maturity you have to be mature when you have a child and you have a human being depending on you you. I don't know I I wish I would have asked Rob right here but would he be the player in the person that he is now today if he didn't have a child at 21 like how did that affect him during that time but we'll have to ask him that offline and the one thing I know that. is that they'd probably get more sleep. <laughs> so they didn't have kids, Maybe so. just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got a chance to catch up with Al about this exact topic a couple weeks ago. Um, he said a lot of similar comments to Rob. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one thing that stood out that he talked about is he said, it's difficult to find time, but there's always time. Um, so let's toss it over to Al. I got to talk with him, like I said, just a couple weeks ago. And here he is talking about fatherhood and juggling that with playing in the NBA. How would you describe the feeling of being a dad? It's a great feeling. Uh, being a dad, it's, it's something that, that I uh, absolutely love. Um, you know, I always wanted to be, um, you know, a, a dad and have my own family and, and be able to, you know, uh, mold my kids and, um, and, and instill, you know, the right values in them. So um, uh, for me, it's, it's just great. It, it's, it's um, you know, it's one of my favorite things. Um, you know, just to to be able to to you know to lead my family and, and just to be there for them and and, um, and and you know just guide them uh, you know in their lives. So I haven't gotten to that stage yet in my life, but I would imagine just having been around with you guys, the flights, the late nights getting home, the late nights of work, even when you're here in Boston, you got to probably miss birthdays. I think you just missed one of your kids' birthdays yesterday. Um, like just how do you juggle that uh, of being able to be a dad and also be able to take care of and you're as professional as they come take care of your job as well how do you how do you juggle those two things um yeah i mean I, it's you know it's, it's all about priorities and um you know for me um uh, before anything, um, you know, uh, God is my priority. God, you know, that, that's, that, that's really what I focus on. And then, you know, after that, my family, it's something that's, that's extremely important to me. And, um, and, and obviously my work and, and I have to put in the time and work. And, but when I'm at home and when I have the time, I make sure that I, you know, that I give, you know, the best quality time that I possibly can, you know, to my, to my kids and, and to my wife. And, uh, and, and really, you know, it's, it's kind of making decisions. It's like doing something, you know, for yourself or doing something else or spending time, you know, helping, you know, for example, my son with his homework or, um, you know, taking them to a park or, um, you know, just doing things like that or, you know, if it's, it's bath time and you got to go do that and, um, and, and different things. So for me, it's really, you know, it's really about, you know, making the most of the time and it's difficult, but, you know, there's always time. And, uh, and, I, and that's, that's the way that I, that I approach it. And you had been in the league for, I think it was like seven or eight years before you had your first child. How did that moment kind of change your perspective, not only on your career, but in life in general? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it gave me a lot of perspective, um, but just just very grateful um, to you know uh, to be able to, to to be a dad and and then um, finding ways to you know to, to make everything work. But 
understanding that you know that I have a job to do and and there's expectations of me and uh, and like you said I have to be professional um, and and go about it that way but um, but it was uh, you know just just good perspective um, you know good good perspective for me keeping everything you know positive and and uh, and really just uh, you know uh, r really enjoying you know the journey uh, it comes with it and and you know growing a family playing it's it can be challenging but uh but uh but um you know it's, it's been great for me you know my wife has been you know a huge support for me and 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 you know makes it easier for me to be able to come out and do what i need to do on the court so conversely we've got jason has a kid at 19 rob williams has a kid at 21 and these two guys have just embraced it since the very start and somehow been able to juggle both of these things that, that you've kind of spoken about, that it, it can be a challenge. How have you seen those two guys in particular navigate those challenges um, in the early portions of their career? Yeah, so the, so the, the, the little that I've seen, um, you know, I've just been, you know, blown away, you know, with uh, – you know the, how much they love their, you know, their sons, uh, their commitments to being dads. Um, uh, you know, it's something that you could tell they really enjoy. Uh, they really embrace, um, and and um, and and they're uh, and and that's like the biggest thing. You know, they're really caring. They're really taking the time, and uh, and just from the interactions that I've had or when I talk to them and things like that, you know, their their faces just light up when they talk about you know, about their kids. And, um, and that's, uh, that's pretty special. I think that's the biggest thing right there. Um, you know, they, they're, they're dads that want to be involved, that, that want to be part of their kid's life. And, uh, and, and I think that's the biggest thing, You're giving your kids as much love as you can. Awesome. All right, Al, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for doing this on an off day. And uh, hopefully we see you guys back out there for another win tomorrow. All right, man. Thank you. All right, man. Thank you very much.